All right, I just finished the first episode of The Wheel of Time, and oh man, it was pretty good. It was perfect. It was not perfect, but uh, that episode was very fast-paced. It was very action-packed, which I did not expect, and I just have to say everything looks completely and utterly stellar. I am beyond happy with even just episode one here. There are definitely things that I'm not happy about, uh, certain types of changes, but I think we'll get payoffs for them later on in the show. Uh, the biggest thing I think that I'm disappointed about will be the fridging of Perrin Ibarra's wife, uh, Layla. Just, that's off to a rough start already with that. Um, but, I mean, you know, Sarah got on Twitter, Sarah Nakamura, the show consultant, and was like, every change was uh, specifically deliberated over for hours on end. And that means that they did talk about this. Uh, they probably did bring up the trope in how it would be received. And they thought that the payoff of adding this in and then implementing this trope of fridging a female for male character development would eventually be worth it. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I think that's going to be seasons down the road. I thought I'd hate the changes to Matt's family a little bit more, but they made it make sense and specifically kind of foreshadow some of Matt's tendencies later on. Oh, it's so hard to do this without spoilers. I want to go full spoiler. I'm trying to keep this spoiler free. There's a lot of foreshadowing in the eye of the world, and there's a lot of foreshadowing in just this episode, just for you non, you non book readers out there. I will say that overall, I mean, just everything about this is awesome. Uh, by the way, Michael Nichol Hatton is Tam, phenomenal. Uh, all of the cast really just blowing it out of the out of the water here. They're all very good. Um, I think the biggest issues people are going to have with first episode here is that the structure is very fast and and very very tight uh, just to get through a lot of content. I mean, we're we've covered 12 chapters of the Eye of the World here. It's roughly about 120 pages, so that's a lot to get through, and they did it pretty effectively. I loved seeing Johan Myers as Pat and Fane. Finally, oh my gosh, that was just his performance and the smarminess that he brought to that character right at the beginning I felt like he was lifted right off the page uh, in terms of how I actually read Pat and Fane so yes uh, perfect casting there I have to say Johan you're gonna kill this character man you're just gonna knock it out of the park uh, you're gonna define who Pat and Fane is uh, completely I think because you've nailed it as far as I'm concerned uh, all the two rivers folk yeah not bad uh, can't complain too much. Uh, I'm just over the moon that it's out. So uh, this is just a quick reaction. Uh, I'll, I'll go back and watch episode two and three now and then get back with you. But yeah, uh, first episode impressions, very good. Cannot wait to get into episode two and three. Um, and hopefully I'll come back with a more critical eye and review after I've seen all three of them and make longer videos. For now, I gotta go watch these. All right, I just finished episode two. Boy, <laughs> this, is, this is good. Episode two is much better, I think, in terms of story structure and pacing than episode one. Episode one was just really fast. Honestly, I think it could have been two uh, separate episodes, but they do have a lot of ground to cover. Um, we're now all, already halfway through book one in two episodes, essentially. Uh, with some things shuffled around so probably due to the shuffling of things maybe it's closer to like 33% through the way of book one but yeah overall this is just I'm loving it I'm loving it standout performances from our Emmons fielders I have to say that scene where they are riding on a horseback and they sing the song of Manetherin was just the hit me in the heart and then we go story we guess not the same it's different because it's just moraine to the kids but still like the fact we got the speech we got the story in the show i'm so so happy so uh yeah i mean i think the biggest takeaway from this episode was uh well the, a couple of the biggest ones uh obviously the white cloaks running into them didn't expect that they would run into them so soon but that replaces their uh running with them at Barelorn. 
and I think that makes it uh, makes it a little bit more interesting. Then, on top of that, uh, all of Shadar Logoth just that that was one of the things I was most excited to see in the show. I got to see it. It basically got the whole like last twenty minutes of episode two, um, and Mashadar looked really good. I I have to say this: they they pulled that like the the thing whispers like you know it's got the the Mashadar like. Anyway, that sounds almost like it's right from the Wheel of Time video game, the 1999 game. Because that's how it sounded in that game. And obviously they went with the more like tenderly white silver mist uh, visual in that game. But the sounds, I feel like they, this team really did their homework on pre-existing Wheel of Time content. And I, they have dropped so many little Easter eggs for fans like this. It's just... It's unbelievable. I'm so happy. We got a white bridge name drop, which was really cool. Uh, so, yeah. Like, we're not going there, maybe. We'll see. But I'm just, I'm still over the moon. Uh, episode 2, really good. I'm going to go ahead and watch episode 3 now. And then we can all nerd out about it later. Alright, I just finished episode 3. Oh, so much good stuff. First off, uh, the Predator reference right in the beginning of the episode, like, confirmed Zoe Robbins is the new Schwarzenegger, like, done. But also just that whole sequence with her being dragged and then the Trolloc, like, ripping its buddy in chunks. Oof. Oh, it was good. It was really good. Oh. The whole episode was good. Um, so far, yeah, general impressions. I think episodes uh, two and three have been significantly better than episode one. Like, episode one has the emotional impact, right? Like, it's the first one we get to watch, the first one we get to see. But they speed through all of that stuff a little too fast. Honestly, this, this season would have benefited from ten episodes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it. We'll probably have at least another episode where we go a little too quickly and I, it's either going to be the penultimate episode or the final episode uh, i'm not sure which one but yeah i i think i think eight might have been a little too short i don't i was a little skeptical of that decision when they announced it and i i stand by that skepticism i hope they move to 10 episodes per season from here on out just to give them that extra breathing room so we don't find ourselves having to rush season to season or you know plot point to plot point in some cases through the later books because they're they're I mean you can you can see the books like right right here they're they're hefty they thick boys they're not they're not thin oh it was just so good though like Nynaeve sneaking up on Lan Lan being like how did you find me phenomenal absolutely phenomenal oh my gosh it's just so much so much happened so confirmed it's Bring Springs by the way uh, the the town that they go in, not Bear Lawn, so that that's gone. But they met Tom Alexander Wilhelm, and I have to say his performance was spectacular. I mean, I I love Book Tom, but I'm here <laughs> I'm here for Zaddy Show Tom uh, because it's just he he just killed it. He just killed that performance. It was awesome. Uh, I'll say this one thing about these these episodes is all of these small actors that were playing you know character Pete parts that we didn't really know about you know like the Alvier's act, actor and actress then Helena Westerman playing Layla and now Izuka Hoyle who was who played Dana uh, I mean just we spent so much time speculating about these people and they literally play characters we'll probably never see again and i absolutely i i wouldn't trade that experience of speculation with all of you through all of the various mediums for anything it's been a wild ride to get here folks it it almost doesn't feel real the show is just far better than expected to be honest it this is even better than what i thought it would be i'm i'm just 
still processing. I literally just finished episode three. Um, everyone is do, doing fantastic. There's not a bad act, like not a bad scene, really, not a bad performance. Um, things that I think are setting this show apart already from all of the previous fantasy shows and films that have come before it are the color. It's very bright. It's very colorful. Um, the color grading, it, it almost looks like how you would see things if you were outside, uh, to be honest. Like, it's almost as if you're viewing it there. I know that might throw some folks off because we're expecting, especially with modern television and cinema, you expect to see kind of a blue filter applied to a lot of stuff or maybe even a brown one. And this is, this is just more like they focused on making certain colors pop in certain scenarios. But other than that, they didn't change, mess with very many tones and, and, and highlights and shadows and all that. So it looks natural, which looks strange. The music is another thing that sets this apart. It doesn't sound like Game of Thrones' music. It doesn't sound like Lord of the Rings music. It's not big, epic, orchestral. It's a lot of guitar-driven stuff, which I love. And for anyone who's been around the Wheel of Time for a long time, you're all familiar with Robert Berry's a soundtrack to the Wheel of Time, which was his, an expansion upon the tracks that he wrote for the video game, released in 1999. And I feel Lorne channeled some of that energy here and channeled it maybe more successfully than, than Robert Berry did, especially within the context of this show. I love both. <laughs> like, I love Robert Berry's soundtrack, too. Like, a lot of people don't like it. They don't like it, but he's got that, like, real Jethro Tolley kind of prog rock slant to his music. Uh, I mean, he even, he even played in a group, like, multiple prog rock, like, super groups. So good. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, dadgad tuning on the guitars I'm hearing, which is, uh, you know, pretty, pretty famous, uh, Celtic-inspired tuning. It's very Irish-sounding. I don't think I don't think they've gone wrong with the music. It's all very good, and yeah, even the changes to the story that we were all worried about—they're not that impactful. Already, we can see the changes to Matt's story having payoffs. Already, we see the changes to Matt's story having payoffs for a lot of his behavior. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, drop a comment down below. Tell me what you thought. Uh, go check out my Patreon. Lowest tier is only a buck. Thank you all so much for watching. And we're finally here.